In this tutorial, we'll guide you through the fascinating world of Wilkinson power dividers, starting with a deep dive into the theoretical aspects and moving on to practical design steps using CST Studio Suite. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a solid understanding of how to design and simulate a Wilkinson power divider, and you'll be equipped with the skills to apply this knowledge in real-world scenarios. What is a power divider? Power dividers are essential RF microwave components used to split or combine signals. Key types include T-junction power divider, Wilkinson power divider, multi-section Wilkinson power divider. What is a Wilkinson power divider? A Wilkinson power divider is a type of power divider that equally splits an input signal into two output signals with equal phase and amplitude. It was designed by Ernest Wilkinson in 1960. Wilkinson power dividers are commonly used in RF and microwave systems for signal splitting and combining without introducing loss, particularly in applications where isolation between output ports is crucial. A Wilkinson power divider divides the input power equally between the output ports. It ensures matched impedance at all ports to minimize reflections. This power divider offers excellent isolation between output ports which is important to prevent interference and signal degradation. This slide shows the schematic overviews of a Wilkinson power divider. A Wilkinson power divider typically consists of a three-port network that splits an input signal into two equal output signals. Input port or port 1 in the pictures is the port where the input signal is fed into the power divider. The impedance at this port is typically matched to the characteristic impedance of the system and it is usually 50 ohms. Output ports are the ports where the divided signals are output. Each output port has an impedance that matches the system impedance. The signals at these ports are equal in amplitude and phase. Also, two quarter wave transmission lines are used in a Wilkinson power divider, each with a characteristic impedance of square to times Z0, where Z0 is the system impedance. These lines transform the impedance seen at the output ports to match the input port impedance. Moreover, an isolation resistor is embedded between the two output ports. Its value is to times Z0. This resistor ensures that the output ports are isolated from each other, meaning no power is transferred between them, which is crucial for applications where output ports need to operate in deepen. Here is some applications of Wilkinson power dividers. A simple comparison between the Wilkinson power divider and T-junction power divider is provided here. By understanding the schematic and components of a Wilkinson power divider, you can better grasp how it functions to provide equal power division with impedance matching and high isolation. This foundational knowledge is crucial when moving on to the practical design and simulation of the divider S. Now, let's see key design parameters that are crucial for designing an effective Wilkinson power divider. With this knowledge in mind, let's move on to the practical part of our tutorial, where we'll use CST Studio Suite to design and simulate our own Wilkinson power divider. Stay tuned. Begin by opening CST Studio Suite and creating a new project. Select microwave and RF optical from the template options. Select circuits and components, choose planar couplers and dividers. Now choose frequency domain solver for this analysis. Click on next. In this section, set the frequency range from 1 GHz to 4 GHz to cover our frequency of interest. After that, press next, press finish to create the project. In the second step, we'll add the structural parameters into parameter list section.
Now, we would like to define a dielectric substrate. Go to Modeling and select Brick, then press ESC to show the dialog box. Create a dielectric substrate with the parameters defined. We'll use Rogers R0403C with a dielectric constant of 3.55. In the load from material library search to find our R0403C lossy. Now, in the same process, Define a ground plane for the created substrate. With the dielectric and ground plane parameters set, we'll move on to designing the layout of the coupler. For quarter wavelength transmission lines, we need to draw to arcs. This can be done using the curves option in the modeling tool. Select arc from curves. In the box, define each of the two arcs. For a half circle, the arc angle should be 180 degrees. We should define two points of each arc in the setting. Draw the second arc using the same process. As you can see, these curves are drawn in the lowest part of the substrate. In this case, they should move to the surface of the dielectric at the top. To do that, select Transform and move them to the dielectric's top surface.
A half circle can now be created by joining two created curves together. You can do that by selecting loft curves. Select each curve by double clicking it. Once you have selected both arcs, press enter twice. As you can see, the created half ring has no thickness. Press S on the keyboard to select the surface of the half ring. Next, make the component thicker by selecting Extrude Face. You can now continue to draw the remaining layout components using modeling and bricks. As Wilkinson power dividers have symmetrical structures, we can mirror the created components to complete the layout. Just select the components, go to Modeling, then select Transform, then choose Mirror. The selected line will be reflected on the X plane by entering one in the space blank in front of it. The next step is to embed a resistance between the quarter wavelength transformers. You can do this by pressing them on the keyboard and selecting two points at the ends of the half rings. You can now select lumped element from the simulation menu. Type the value of the resistance in the properties box. Once the layout is complete, it's time to set up the simulation. Define the waveguide ports at the ends of the transmission lines. 
You can do that by pressing the S key on your keyboard to select the surface of a transmission line. Select Waveguide Port from the simulation in the top menu. Waveguide Ports should cover a space around microstrip lines. We apply a margin of 5 times H to the right, left, and top sides of the waveguide ports. To cover the bottom edge of the dielectric, we consider a margin of H. Now, we do the same process to define other waveguide ports. Everything seems to be done now. It just takes a few adjustments in the monitor setting to view the fields, electric currents, and H fields. Open the field monitor. Select desired frequency points to view E fields, surface currents, and H fields. Go to Simulation, press Setup Solver, and click Start to run the simulation. After finishing the simulation, go to Navigation Tree and open the 1D Result and CS Parameters folder. The performance parameters such as S parameters, insertion loss, and isolation are listed here. Interestingly, Wilkinson power dividers divide input power equally between output ports, as shown in the simulated result. Additionally, it could prevent interference and degradation of signals by providing excellent isolation between output ports. Furthermore, by opening to D, 3D results, we can find the E field, H field, and surface currents at defined frequencies. Before we wrap up, let's quickly recap what we covered in today's tutorial. We delved into the theory behind Wilkinson power dividers and demonstrated how to design and simulate one using CST Studio Suite. You should now have a solid understanding of the design principles and practical steps required to create a Wilkinson power divider. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more RF and microwave design tutorials. Until next time, keep exploring, keep designing, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible in RF and microwave engineering. Have a fantastic day.